next 15 minutes where each of the uh, three candidates will speak on electoral reform and democracy. And so uh, they drew straws earlier, these straws that I've been filling up here. So uh, we're starting with uh, Lloyd Longfield and then proceeding uh, to the right, my right. Lloyd. Thank you, thank you, Jason. And uh, Anita, wonderful job. I'm really glad I don't have to change my notes at this point or <laughs> head out the back of the stage. This is the most important topic we're going to talk about in this election. There is no other more important topic. Because it deals with the foundations of Canadian democracy. And there is cracks in the foundation. And you've seen the numbers. I just saw them myself. And it really shows how serious an issue it is, not only in Guelph, but across the country. So just to acknowledge fair vote for the work you're doing to bring democracy forward and get people thinking about democracy. And thanks to Hope House for providing the space and Anita for providing the, the background for our discussions tonight and the other candidates that have found time in their schedules to be here. Because it is a tight, tight thing as far as schedules go over the next uh, 40 days, is it? Something like 30 something. No, it's going to be busy. So, I agree that the electoral system needs to be changed. I think the methodology of PR is really the point of discussion and how we come to decisions. We have to look at not just the electoral process, though. I think we have to look at the democratic process in Guelph, across Canada. Everything starts in Guelph. <laughs> this is where conversations happen, and it's amazing how our conversations ripple out to the rest of the country. We have to reform the way government works. Getting the right proportional system put in place is one thing, but then what? How do you reform democracy? How do you make it relevant? <coughs> The best, the best indicator of relevance is how many young people are in the audience, how many young people are at the polls. Young people will tell us what's relevant, and they'll be right. So we have to make our system relevant. We have to make our voting system relevant, and we have to make our parliamentary system relevant. <coughs> Guelph is also the center of 260 ridings that were hit with voter suppression. We've had many conversations in this room here about voter suppression and what it means as an attack and an affront on the democracy. The Liberal government, if elected, has declared that this will be the, the last election with first past the post, and that Elections Canada has to be reformed. Elections Canada has been asking and petitioning the Government of Canada for change and has been ignored, no surprise there. Elections Canada wants to be able to detect fraud, wants to be able to prosecute fraud, and more importantly, wants to prevent fraud in the future. And currently, under our existing legislation, they have no teeth, We've had ridings across Canada that have tried to go to Elections Canada to petition and to have lawsuits and to try and get the government to change. The teeth were taken out of Elections Canada and they have to be put back in. So in this 18 months coming up after the election, the Liberal, Liberal Party of Canada has a real change agenda and it will involve community discussions like this across Canada with a blue ribbon panel at the front and all parties, including the one that isn't here tonight, because they also have a voice, and it's very important that their voice is heard. Seven million voters. We might not agree with them, but they have to be at the table. Somehow we have to make that happen. So we've seen the background. I won't go over that, but I think what we have to look at is how do we decentralize power in Ottawa so that you are the power. We are the spokespeople for your power. That centralized power is becoming bigger and bigger every election, every government. We have to take it back to where it used to be. 
Members of Parliament being muzzled and being whipped. I don't want to be whipped. <laughs> I want to represent you guys. So we need a responsible and respectful government. It has to respect you, the voters. It has to respect democracy. It has to put Canada back where Canada needs to be. A democracy that the rest of the world looks at and says, that's a democracy. They're helping people in need. They're sharing talent. They're educating. They're peaceful. And they're respectful. I don't know about you, but that's the Canada I want to live in. Thank you, Lloyd. And uh, next, Andrew Seagram, the NDP. Uh, I'd also like to thank Fairview Canada for holding the forum this evening and uh, allowing us to talk about democracy and proportional representation. Uh, it's also a pleasure to be here at Hope House, which is a, a phenomenal organization. And I've had the pleasure of working with them uh, tirelessly for uh, many years uh, as they've uh, worked incredibly well with the vulnerable sector of wealth. And we do a phenomenal, respectful, decent job with people. So, here's the word. And of course, it's a pleasure to be here with Lloyd and Gord. This is our first. Uh, pitch battle, so it's uh, this is great, I'm sure we'll, we seem to be getting along well now, so hopefully we'll get to <laughs> um, It's a further pleasure to be here with a crystal clear message for you. Electing an NDP government in this election means Canada will have you. Thank you. <laughs> so we're friendly. Uh, means that Canada will have proportional representation in the following election. It will, it will mean, for example, the Green Party will have a tenfold more MPs than they will likely have after the vote on October 19th. <laughs> Tom Mulcair and the NDP will bring in a system of mixed member proportions. <laughs> issues, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, I was saying stuff. Um, Tom Mulcair and the NDP will bring in a system of mixed member proportional representation, MMP. It isn't perfect, but it represents a much more equitable distribution of MPs across Canada and in Parliament. MMP has been our policy for years, and it's what we've been campaigning on, and it's what we will implement when we're elected. The first past the post system is an antiquated method, as we've seen of deciding elections, especially in such a diverse country as Canada and its dealings with a multi-party system. In December, as we saw in the presentation of 2014, the NDP did put forward a motion in the House of Commons with the support of the Green Party and other independent parties in the, to bring in mixed member MMP. As well, 16 Liberal MPs did support the motion, but Justin Trudeau and the rest of his caucus were opposed and voted against MMP just a few short months ago. I want to, this is, and I also want to talk about another aspect of democracy in Canada, and that is the importance of our government reflecting our population, something I believe that the NDP does the best of any party. In our party, a nomination meeting cannot go ahead unless outreach has been made to potential candidates who are women, or marginalized people, or minorities. And as of September 1st, 43% of our nominated candidates are women. This compares to 31% for the Liberals, and 32% for the Greens, and a paltry 19% for the Conservatives. And we have a groundbreaking 23 Indigenous candidates this election. Rachel Notley's Alberta government is the first provincial government in Canadian history with a majority of women in power in the legislature. <laughs> also, I'd like to add that the NDP will repeal the quote-unquote Fair Elections Act. <laughs> it is as well as it sounds. It's, just, <laughs> it's 
It's a horrible thing for people. It's time for the NDP to be government, to lift Canada back up to where we know we can be, to be a government that Canadians are proud of and respect, and that we're a progressive leader in the world again. So let's make this election the last unfair federal election Canada ever has. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew, and uh, now Gord Miller from the Green Party. Thank you, Jason. Working? Yes, it is. Well, I too would like to thank Fair Road Canada for its, you know, sponsoring this forum. It's absolutely a critical uh, question. It's been at the center of Green Party policy for years. We've, in fact, kept this initiative alive over the years. Uh, as Andrew pointed out, the, uh, the Liberals have uh, you know, waffled on this. In fact, uh, Mr. Trudeau has actually spoken in favor of an alternative voting system, which was not proportional. And as you, as you pointed out, he voted against proportional representation in the NDP motion in December. So, uh, you know, there, we, the NDP, though, and you're right, uh, Andrew, they, they have had this in their policy for years. They've formed five, now six, provincial governments. And every time they get into power, they have stopped and never done anything on proportional representation. Someone has to keep them honest. That's the Green Party's job. We have to have Green MPs in Ottawa to keep these parties honest. <laughs> Lloyd says he doesn't want to be whipped. I, nobody wants to be whipped. Nobody's whipped in the Green Party. But the fact of the matter, Lloyd, is that the, the Liberal Party does whip their votes. And I haven't heard the leader say anything uh, notable since that time. And if we, or if our, our most recent reminder is Bill C-51, where the largest protest in Canada was in this riding against it. And the vote was whipped. And the local Liberal voted for C-51. In fact, he was a deputy whip. So the, the reality is the senior, the, the senior parties have this process of, of a central power and they have not seen fit to let go of it and do proportional representation. We have to get Greens in there to keep them honest. And by the way, Andrew, our caucus is 50% women and so they're women leaders. So. <laughs> that uh, New Zealand and Germany have. I've been, as Environmental Commissioner of Ontario, I've been to uh, New Zealand on official business for Parliament uh, twice, in fact, and I'm appointed to talk to the parliamentarians. I was down there meeting with the uh, Environmental Commissioner of New Zealand, uh, who is also an officer of Parliament, and we you know, talked to New Zealanders, we talked to parliamentarians, and everybody loves the system now, and now it's been implemented. But most important to me was to sort of test it, you know, how, how can I find out if it's really working to my satisfaction? And I went in, in one of my duties to a, a forum and there was a panel, much like this one, with the, there are like three similar parties, they have different names, but they more or less represent the same, well, I should say the one party that's missing, the uh, a Labour Party and a sort of a Liberal Party, as, as well as Greens. But they, they were up there uh, discussing and debating uh, on some question. And I was so impressed because in a mixed member parliament, the members have so much independence and they have to know the issues and they have to debate. The level of debate, even though I could sort of pick out the conservative, the, the level of sophistication in the debate was very, very impressive. Better than anything I've ever seen in Canada amongst a multi-party discussion. So that's what you get, that's the product. And the reason for that, it was alluded to by Anita, is that, is that there are no majorities in, in, typically in these mixed member parliaments. They're, they're uh, always minorities, sometimes there's former coalitions, sometimes there's lighter coalitions, but because of that, it changes the nature of politics. People go in, they know that they're going to have to cooperate, they know that they're gonna to have to come to consensus, so it changes the na nature of the debate and the discussion, and it is not an adversarial system. Now, we've seen flashes of that in Canada. For those of us old enough to remember the Niefenmaker government, that was a minority go federal government years and years ago, but it brought us Medicare in a minority government. That got through in Canada, so it can work here. In 1977, in 1977, in the Ontario Parliament, we had a, 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 it was a, quite funny, I had a discussion, I was a commissioner with some very senior parliamentarians experienced, you'd know their names if you heard them, but they said, you know, that 77 Parliament, we were, we Gone to the into election and the, 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 the uh, electorate brought back essentially the same parliament. So we knew well, we better not do that again. He said we better make this work. And there was a three years of a minority parliament, which those those representatives said were the best years of electoral politics they've ever seen in Ontario in, in years and years and years they've been interested in politics. 
So it can work. In, the, in those years, you have things called select committees where the parties work together to draft legislation, work out the kinks. And so when it comes to the floor, there's a real discussion, real substantive discussion. That's what, what a mixed member of proportionality will, will give us if we can get there. And one last thing that I should point out that hasn't been mentioned that on, on MMP, uh, they, there are some people who are elected from lists on the parties. And I read right off the bat, there's a, there's a reaction what's from a list. But what that does, it gives an avenue, you can still pick from other people, it gives an avenue for people who are in our society. You know, picture someone who's a top surgeon and retires from surgery now and wants to talk about health care in Parliament. How does that person get into our Parliament? Not easily, because he has he or she has no constituency, right? They, they haven't worked for years to build a community base and things. Or someone in law, or someone in universities that, that had to go to big centers and, and haven't got a natural constituency. In, in a mixed member proportional system, you can put those people into Parliament and we can get a higher grade of people with more knowledge and better knowledge and supporting the, the decisions made by the country. So the Green Party is utterly and totally in support and has been for years. And we, please send Greens to Ottawa. We'll hold their feet to the fire. We'll make sure it's spoken about.